There are investors right now that have basically taken their current Bitcoin holdings and borrowed money against it and then went and bought more Bitcoin with the money they borrowed. So they're Because levered. the interest rate is lower than the value yes. of the Bitcoin yes. you're making. So the interest rate on it's 2%. Well, if I was the bank. And they're I'm like, it's Bitcoin historically has went up 50% a year. Why would It's you? a no-brainer. Now, the thing is, though, is technically you borrow on twice as much as you actually have. So the, at the point that it does drop in half, they call. They make a call on the, on the loan. They take all your Bitcoin. Smoked. Yeah, which is what happened on the downfall. People were over-levered. People were doing 100x leverage. That's insane. It is insane. And it should it should really shouldn't be allowed to do that. But that's that was what caused it to fall like it did because you gotta think, you know, if if you were levered a hundred X, um, if it went up a hundred percent, you were good. Right? Of course. You made a thousand percent of money, but if it went down one percent, you got liquidated. And so as soon as the market started to fall, all these people that were over le- over levered, had, they all got liquidated. They had to sell. They were forced to sell, which made it fall more, which liquidated more people, which made it fall more, and which liquidated more mm-hmm. people. And so it did that till it basically took out everybody that's over levered. The only thing that was left was the people that actually owned the product itself. So I mean, it's there's a lot of grain pains that are going to happen between now and then, but the technology itself is super exciting so we'll go back to that that's how we started bitcoin would be an episode crypto would be an episode but today it's about blockchain and the technology behind crypto but yeah blockchain is more than crypto absolutely it's something it way more it's web too it is so you really need to separate those two and say there's bitcoin and cryptocurrency and then there's blockchain blockchain is going to be web3 it's going to be the next internet. So how would you invest in blockchain? Not not currency. Not it's a good that. it's a really good question and obviously there are, there are companies out there that are based just around the technology that are pub, probably public, publicly traded. Yeah, so there's two ways to do it. You can invest in a company mm-hmm. that that is in that industry. So for instance, a good a good uh, analogy would be um, a good analogy would be like uh, Shopify. Okay. Okay. Shopify is in the business of making websites. They don't own the platform that the websites sit on. Though, right. Right. So that's that's a good analogy. If you invested in Shopify, if Shopify was around when the internet first started and you invested in that, you probably would have done pretty well. Well. So there's that. You can invest in a company that works in that space. Coinbase would be one of those, right? They work in that space. Mm-hmm. It's a company though that you're it's you know, on the stock exchange, you could invest in that company. But what's going to happen on this go around is you're going to be able to invest in the technology itself where you didn't with Web2. So, for instance, if I owned, say, HTML was a, a cryptocurrency, it was a coin. You could have, when, it, when somebody developed HTML and they said, hey, we need this code to work, to, you know, for the Internet to work, we need this code. But you can buy one twenty-one millionth of this code or as much of it as you want to do. But we're going to break it up in 21 million parts. And as the internet grows, so does your part, right? And then what happens is comes along is you got the Googles and the Amazons and all these huge companies that built on top of that. What you would own would be worth everything, right? The 21 million would be worth the entire internet. It'd be worth Google, Apple, uh, you name it. Any business on the internet, that $21 million will be worth that. I don't know what the number would be right now. Trillions, I'm sure. sure. So whatever your part of that would be worth that. You could then sell it to somebody else. That's what's going to happen with blockchain. Now, not necessarily in the way because you can't own the blockchain. The blockchain is just a process. But there are technologies that allow people to do things like these smart contracts. You have to do that through Ethereum. If me and you created tomorrow an nft that nft would work on ethereum the second i sold that to you that transaction would then go through ethereum and you'd have to pay for that transaction in ethereum and a small cut of that goes to the people who basically keep ethereum going so smart contracts do not work without the crypto piece to it period uh yes that's the tricky part because crypto is a kind of broad term that gets confused a lot but yes it's cryptographic 
crypto right. cryptography is what makes it happen, makes it immutable, where somebody can't crack in there. Are they doing it today? Are they selling real estate, smart contracts today? There is a company called Proppy. You can buy the Proppy coin. It is digital real estate assets. Now, how big and how much they do and all that stuff, I don't know. But you can actually go around their website, look I'm it up. Look it up. Look it up. Proppy. Put in like a... I wish I could share my screen. I'd just do it on here. Um, so it's a property is a real estate transaction platform that empowers buyers, sellers, their agents, and escrow agents to close a traditional real estate deal entirely. 